Hello and welcome, my name is Sakura and this is the patch note for patch 118, the Prussia patch for Wolfen and Sally's 4, that are coming out tomorrow. So, new patch, all the, wa all the way to 118 now, not has happened since we started out a couple years ago. Um, so, overview, as you can see, the headliners are institutions. They are completely overhauling the technology system, which has basically been in Europa Nasalis since Europa Nasalis 1. And now they are actually changing it, so instead of the old technology groups, which just had an arbitrary limit on, um, on tech, you now have institutions, which we will talk more about. Also, we now get a more active say in the cultures that are accepted in your country, instead of it just being decided by how big they are, about uh, with some random magic uh, behind the scenes. You now get to pick them yourself. Uh, I believe you can... I can't remember. We'll go through this um, in my Let's Play when the patch drops, but I think it's something like three cultures you can choose and then you can get more um, depending on your diplotech. So it's gonna be a little bit like states, but for culture. So something, yeah. Uh, it's interesting because you get to decide more yourself and it's less just random stuff happening. Then you can now, if you have Ma Nostrum, you will get a free, extra free feature now that if you are a merchant republic, you are kind of dependent on having the trade cities. And you can now create a trade city for yourself. You can release a single province that will be a run province Reiner who will forever be in your trade league. So that's kind of a workaround for when you grow too big to for anyone to actually want to be part of your trade league. Uh, then there's like something for the multiplayers. You can now add a option for a brain dead AI to take over your country instead of an AI that changes all your decisions if you should drop out of a multiplayer game. Uh, there are some random new world improvements. There's some new achievements. There is some new national ideas added for some countries that didn't have them already. There are a new status quo ending for a succession war. And then of course there's some new DLC that are coming with it. And of course there's the expansion. And we'll go through the expansion first. So this is paid futures. You have to buy the expansion if you want to get access to this. And the first one is really interesting. It's rulers now develop personalities when they become adult. Personalities are are now also gained after 10 and 25 years on the throne. And this is basically just some extra flavor for your ruler. It will be different traits that can add bonuses or even penalties uh, in the game. And they will be added at random after they become adult, as it says, and then after they get, have ruled for 10 or 25 years. So it's just something new and interesting instead of just the old three stats for Diplo, Admin, and Military. So that's gonna be some some extra flavor. Also, you can now abdicate. There are some things, like some, um, what do you call it? You need to fulfill some, some things before you can do it. I think you need to have been on the throne for 25 years or so. But then you can abdicate if you have like a really bad leader, a 0, zero, zero you no longer have to wait for them to die. You can actually f just kill them after a while, or abdicate. Um, you can do the same with an heir, which will come later, I think. You can get rid of your heir. And if you've played one of the other Paradox games, Crusader Kings, you'll know how you do that with a little bit of knife or poison, anything. But you can now get rid of them. It will cost a bit big um, penalty on your prestige. But again, if you have the zero 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 air, yeah, it might be worth it. Anyway, let's get on with this. Uh, you may now develop your subject subjects provinces, which will decrease the liberty desire. So another way to decrease liberty desire, which I could certainly have used in my Swedish campaign, and also just a way for you to. Uh, get rid of your monarch points if you if you have developed your own country sufficiently that it's becoming expensive to do development then maybe you can do it on your subjects and take then you can 
not use it straight away, but you will be able to use it once you take them over. So that's a little thing that's nice. Uh, we will also get some death reasons when you lose your money, the monarch, so a little bit more flavor. And then something that's really interesting, the great powers. So up until now, the only way you kind of had a a sense of which were the big players uh, were through the ledger. You could go in and see who has the most score. Uh, but now they're adding an actual mechanic for that, and that mechanic is called great powers. There are, I believe, eight great powers at any one time, and those are decided by their development, total development, modified by their tech penalty. And that, of course, has to do with all the institutions and stuff that we'll be talking about later, but the great powers have different uh, powers as well. Uh, they can intervene in other wars with great powers and so on. So on. I think we'll come uh, to all the things when we read on in the text, but it's a really interesting mechanic, uh, very visible that these eight powers are the greatest powers in the world and they actually get something out of it. Um, you can also construct buildings in subject provinces, so a little bit along the lines of this. You can take on foreign debt. Um, this is a new diplomatic action. It's for great powers only, and you get a significant opinion boost out of it. So it's kind of a way for you, if you are at that stage, for example with Venice, where you're just getting so much money you don't know what to do with it, well, you can use it to get some significant opinion boosts, or you can uh, pay off the debts of someone that you want to join a war. That's one of the most annoying reasons for why they won't join a war. Well, now you can do something about it. Then you can influence a nation, uh, which will sway the opinion and provide a plus one monarch power boost to lesser country in the category where it has the lowest gain. Again, this is something for great powers, they can do this. Uh, something really interesting here, you can now debase your currency. Um, and it ha this has to do with the new corruption system, uh, which in my opinion was a little bit too easy to work with in the, in the last patch where it was added. Uh, unless you were doing really bad tech-wise, corruption wasn't really a problem. But now you can do something with corruption. You can, instead of taking loans, which you have to pay back, and from which you gain inflation, you can now debase your currency, which corresponds to a bank loan, but instead of having to pay it back, and instead of it incurring, um I just said the word. Anyway, instead of it affecting your money, it's now adding corruption, 2% at a time. Uh, so it's just a, a new way to get some money if you're in a, a sticky situation and a new cor mechanic for corruption. Then there's a ledger page for great powers, console commands, um, and great powers can intervene in a war where other great powers are in. So if we have three three great powers in a war, two on one side and one on the other, then you can intervene on the part that has the fused great powers. So that's probably mostly interesting for multiplayer, but yeah. You can also upgrade fleets of subjects. Oh, no, in subject promises. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, leaders can now also have traits. After a battle, there's a chance that the commanding officer of each side gains a trait. These tra traits are based on the army and navy tradition gained in the battle. All leader traits are positive and affect combat abilities, movement speed, blah 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 blah. Again, more flavor, plus it actually gives interesting bonuses, which means that you might actually want, oh, I, I have this general that I use when I attack into the hills, for example, something like that. I'm not familiar with what the different things are, but that's something we can explore in my, in my Let's Play with Wheel. We'll be starting tomorrow. Uh, the Fetish Chest religion has been changed, so you can now get cults, so a little bit more um, to do with them. Then the Daimyo and Ottoman government have been changed uh, so that they will always maintain that dynasty. Uh, so uh, it will always be the Osman Oglu that rules Ottoman from now on. And Ottoman government has been changed a lot. Um, you now have a harem, you can choose your 
heirs, they can rebel against you and stuff like that. Um, revolutionary republics will now gain their own factions. There will be the Girondists who will attempt to spread revolution abroad. There will be the Royalists who will try to create a revolutionary empire. And the Jacobins who will support the realization of the revolutionary ideals internally. You can now peacefully abandon the personal union and it will give a um, penalty to the opinion based on the labor desire of the country. You can set uh, you can set rulers, personalities in the nation designer, you can pay off subjects, country steps, which is interesting. Uh, you can dis what I was talking about, you can disinherit heirs if you have positive prestige for a severe prestige hit. You can strengthen your government for military power, so something to dump in your mil military power in. This is really nice. And you can basically pay military power to gain legitimacy, public condition, devotion, hard unity, or whatever whatever the mechanic for your government in, you can strengthen it by paying military power. And that's really interesting. Then Prussia gets its own government form, the Prussia Monarchy, which we'll be playing with in the next playthrough. And I don't, it, it doesn't say too much about it here, but apparently it affects your monarch, it can't have a lower military rating than three, and legitimacy is changed into militarization of society, I believe. Uh, and I think that's basically it for the paid part. Um, and then there's the free features. There's the big one, the technology systems. Instead of just re uh, arbitrary technology groups, you will now have institutions. I believe there will be eight institutions, but I'm not completely sure. I think it's eight. And the first one will be there from the start of the game. It's feudalism. And feudalism is in any country that is not tribal, which means that any non-tribal nations in the whole world, that's most nations that you are be, you'll be playing, will start on the same footing. So for the first 10 years or so, there will be no tech penalties. Then in the 1450s, uh, we will get the Renaissance in Italy, Later on there will be the printing press, there will be the colonization, there will be free trade, there will be all kinds of institutions. They will all happen in a place that is specified by the institution. And from there they will spread. And until you have embraced those institutions, you will incur a 1% tech penalty each year up to a certain limit. I think it's 50% for most of them. Uh, and so this way it's a more mechanic like they've added a mechanic for this instead of just saying that it's western nations so if you're playing in Ming for example if you manage to to work around this get some allies in the western world or something like that then I can actually keep on up on tech much easier so that's really really interesting I'm really really looking forward to playing around with this and seeing how it works um, and I think it's it's a much better simulation of the real world instead of just arbitrarily saying that people in Europe are smarter or something. Anyway, I think it's a really neat system that I'm excited to try. Then there's the new culture acceptance mechanics that I've already talked a little bit about where you get to decide which cultures are accepted and it's based on diplomatic tech. Then there's the brain dead AI, we talked about that. They're gonna add something to the minimap so you can see units on the minimap. This is really nice because oftentimes it can be hard to find uh, find armies out on the wor world map. Um, then there's some mechanics for the some cheats and stuff. Let's see. There's a section where the attacker can now demand cancel subject on the country in question as part of the war goal. Mm, the next thing is just console things. Then there are some game balance things that we'll touch on quickly. Theocracies now don't really go for different religions, so the Turks and the Papal State being an alliance probably not so likely anymore. There's now a scale penalty to liberty desire up to a tw plus 25% at maximum mercantilism. Okay, interesting. 
Vassals fighting each other will now always accept enforced peace, but it will cost 10 liberty desire. Treasure fleets now give inflation as the same as gold mines. Trade companies can now be used by all tech groups. Interesting. Uh, this, this was something I, I experienced in one of my own games where I was playing a custom nation and I chose the, like, the Mesoamerican, high American thing. And they couldn't do trade companies, which was really annoying. I, it is a nice change. Plutocracy now gets fast institution spread instead of chip tech cost. Scientific revolution, 10% as well. And some other things that apparently gives institution spread. This is just an explanation of what they do. Um, <coughs> you'll now get, this is really important, spy network bonuses will now apply on the target subject. So, used to be if you are in a war with Poland and Lithuania, you would have to spy on both of them to get the uh, bonus to siege. You now just get it on the on the target and not, uh, not have to do it on the subject as well. Mm. You can no longer move your capital to a continent that has less than a third of your total provinces unless your capital is the last province you own on this continent. So basically if you want to move your capital you have to move it to somewhere where at least a third of your provinces are unless you are being wiped out and it's your only province left. <coughs> you now have land and naval access to all subjects of the same overlord. Some minor things, Locky Nations have been changed, so only eight now. This one, I, one I thing I noticed in my Danish game that they changed um, Monopoly now, or not Monopoly, Mercantilism, so we can buy it with Diplo Points. And it seems like a hundred PI was then too expensive, so I'm glad to see that it's now changed it, so it's now only 50 PI to increase um, Mercantilism. Defender of Fanes, this makes sense. Um, some bonuses were redeveloped. Basically, most of these are just small things that doesn't really matter to you unless it's you're doing it, unless you're like something like this. HRE can no longer form Persia. Well, that's probably only relevant if you're doing a achievement runaround. So I think I'll let you read the rest of these patch notes yourself. There's also a lot about AI and interface as well as user modding. You may be able to hear that my voice is giving out now, so I'll let you read that yourself. I'll post a comment uh, in the description with the link to this. So hope you'll join me tomorrow for actually playing the new patch. Uh, but until then, have a good day.